Before I get started, just want to point out how awesome that was from um, Zach and Tom that they coordinated their outfits today. I think that's really cute. Um, and I, I noticed that over there, but then I also realised that I'm wearing green and black as well. Um, so, yeah, we didn't actually plan that. Um, so, today, we're going to be talking about why there's so much bad in the world, where it came from, and what we can do about it. And our big idea today is that God's good is always best, not sometimes, always now, I don't know about you guys, but that challenges me a lot because so often I catch myself trying to convince myself that I know best and that it'll be okay if I make my own path to follow, even if God's prompting me. We'll be unpacking this today and trying to figure out what this means for our everyday lives and how the decisions that we make each day can either be to follow God's good path for us or try to convince ourselves that our path is better. And our key verse that connects this message um, to God's word is from Colossians chapter 3, verse 17a. We heard it before. Everything you say and everything you, should, everything you do should all be done for Jesus your Lord. So it's really easy to think that things other than God in this world can make us happy and give us what we need. For example, think about all the different ways that we can entertain ourselves these days. We are so spoilt. Hands up if you've got Netflix, Stan, Disney Plus, a PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, a phone, social media, access to YouTube, Fortnite. Ooh, not as many hands. I reckon there's a few more that are sneakily out there. We have all we need in that list to settle in for a lazy weekend of non-stop entertainment. And I love winter in Tassie for that one thing, being able to settle in under a warm blanket in front of a great Xbox game and chase achievements while it's pouring with rain and freezing cold outside. There's more than enough in that list of things to fill every free moment, not only in our weekends, but in our regular school and work days too. With so many options to entertain ourselves with, we shouldn't find ourselves with the time to ever get bored, right? There are so many great choices in each of those things that I listed. Plenty of awesome movies, full series of TV shows to binge watch and thousands of games to choose from many of which we can download and play for free without even having to go and ask mum or dad for permission or to use their credit card to buy it. But, as Pe who knows Peter Parker? Who's Peter Parker? Spider-Man, yeah. As Peter Parker's uncle so famously said, with great power comes great responsibility. We have got so many quick and easy ways we can entertain ourselves, so many ways we can fill every waking moment of our lives, but so many of those options are jam-packed with stuff that does not match up with who God is, with what God stands for and the good life that he has planned for each and every one of us. Unfortunately, there are people in the world who think it's okay to create movies, TV shows and video games with really inappropriate things in them that children should not be exposed to. Now, they do put classifications on them, saying that they are for adults or people over the age of 16, but that doesn't mean that you, as children, are guaranteed to be protected from them. You can still accidentally stumble across them when you're looking for something to watch on a streaming service. You can still stumble across them when you turn on your game console and a new ad pops up. Or you're playing at your friend's house on their console and their profile doesn't have parental controls on them. We need to learn how to protect ourselves from seeing and hearing the things that people have made that don't line up with God's values so that we can make sure that we are following God's plan for us and that we're not being corrupted or led astray by things that are not pleasing to God and that are not from him and that he never intended for us to see or hear. We have so much to fill our lives with, with all of these different ways to entertain ourselves, 
that it also becomes very easy to forget about God and not give him any of our time. If we are not deliberate in setting time aside for God, we can very easily go an entire day without talking to him or thinking about him. And we can end up dangerously close to placing more importance on other things rather than having God as our number one, just like what happened in our Bible story from today. So there are two things that I want all of us to do, and I need to do this as well because I'm guilty of this, just as everybody else is at some point in time of placing other things as more important than God. Those of us who are in this room and those who are watching online, two things that I want us to do. Number one, when we find ourselves with spare time during our day, before we reach for the TV remote, before we pick up our game, con game control, before we start swiping on our phones or tablets, I want us to check in with God. He is right there with us throughout every second of our day. We need to check in with him, talk to him about how our day is going and ask him for guidance around the choices that we will make in the rest of our day. We need to make him the priority chase his plan for you and the second thing we need to do when we do jump on whatever device we choose to entertain ourselves with whenever you choose to do it and please don't get me wrong I love playing video games I try to find time every day to chill out at the end of a work day and play a good game I want you to pause and think whether what you are about to watch or play is pleasing to God would it be something that you would sit and watch or play with God? Would you be okay with him joining you while you watch something that is potentially offensive or rude or hurtful to others or inappropriate? Now, God tells us if we shouldn't be watching or playing something. He's not going to sit back and just let you make a wrong decision. For me, he either tells me by placing a thought in my head, mm, this isn't okay, or I get an uneasy feeling in my stomach like butterflies and I immediately know I've stumbled across something that is not for me. When we don't fully understand or trust who God is, we tend to try and make him who we want him to be because we think we know what will make us happy. What I mean by this is when we don't fully understand who God is in our lives as a friend, a teacher, a comforter, the ultimate guide and coach for our lives, we can end up convincing ourselves that God would be okay with us choosing to watch or play something we shouldn't be watching or playing. When we don't fully understand and trust just how much God loves each and every person on this planet, we can very easily convince ourselves when we're frustrated after getting knocked out of an online game that it would be okay to say nasty things to whoever knocked us out because we're frustrated or angry. For example, if you play Fortnite or Apex or Overwatch or any other online game, you could check yourself and ask, do I need to have the in-game lobby turned on so that I can hear everybody else? Because that's got to be one of the biggest concerns um, for parents and myself as well. Um, you can hear what other people are saying and it's all coming through into your bedroom or your living room. When you get eliminated... Do you want to hear people saying things that you shouldn't be exposed to? Do you need to jump on your mic and give the other player a piece of your mind? Or could you choose to play with the lobby off to protect yourself from hearing things that you shouldn't hear? And if you feel that Fortnite is an okay choice for you to play or other online games, which option do you think God would be happy with for you? A potentially damaging experience where you hear things that you shouldn't be hearing? or an enjoyable experience where the only people you hear are your friends in a private chat. We need to trust God for who he is and trust that his way is the best. He is a God who loves, who cares, who protects and has a plan for us all. Now, in order for us to make good decisions and trust that his way is always best... We need to know who God is. We need to spend time talking with him, listening to him, reading his word, talking with other people we trust about God and asking questions. That way we can learn who he is, what pleases him, what he has planned for us and what he is okay with us doing, seeing and hearing in this world. Remember, 
God's good is always best. I'd like to invite Zach and Tom back up to join us. Thanks so much, Chris. My pleasure. It was awesome. Yeah, I really appreciate that. That was amazing. Such a good word. Excellent. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I think it's just so important that um, we're doing everything we can to not only protect ourselves but also look out for the younger people and you guys and helping to teach how we can navigate all of this stuff and still stay true to who God is and who he wants us to be. No, that's so right, yeah. We've got to stay so close to God because it is honestly a dangerous world out there and there's so many different ways that can go bad if you're not focused on God. So that's amazing. Yeah, I think for me what I got out of that was um, when you said, it's funny, you said the, the quote from um, Uncle Ben, he says, with great power comes great responsibility. It kind of just shows me, it's like, well, you're right. Like, there's so much in front of me that I have access to, so much good stuff and so much bad stuff. And so what it got me thinking was, I'm not sure if you guys know, but for this year, um, Hope Youth's uh, verse is Romans 12.2, and it says, uh, do not be conformed to the world, um, oh, but be tra- transformed by the renewal of your mind, mind, and so that you can yeah. discern what is good and right and pure. And it got me thinking, it's like, well, if I have all of this stuff in front of me, lots of good stuff, lots of bad stuff, how do I work out what's good and what's bad? Mm. So the challenge that I got from that was, in order for me to live my life with all of this stuff and do it honouring God, I need to be reading His Bible and I need to be praying to Him all the time so that He's speaking to me when I'm doing these different things so that I can work out, that's not good. That is good. Like you said, like, would we be happy with God sitting with us, playing that game or watching that show or whatever it is? So, yeah, that was the challenge that I got from that, just to be awesome. more uh, embedded in His Word. Yeah. Absolutely. Perfectly summed up. What about you, Tom? Oh, I loved it so much. Yeah, I feel like um, there was a verse in Matthew where it says, like, you can't have two masters because you're going to love the one and hate the other or you're going to be devoted to one, despise the other. So it's like you can't have two, two masters and it's the same with this. It's like you can't have, um, you can't have your, your car you know, and God. You can't have your Xbox and, and you can't put that above God. It's not that you can't have it. It's that you can't put it above God because otherwise you're, you're serving it as a master. So we've got to actually realize that. It sounds a bit weird, but it's actually true. Is that we can't put it above God otherwise. We're, we're basically going to that, that, that creation and going, hey, you know, what do I do here? Well, I want to spend more time with you. And it's like, no, no, you've got to be spending time in the Word we've got. That's so good. Well, I might pray, and then uh, me and Tom can jump into the close, if that's all right. Beautiful. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this program this morning. Thank you so much for uh, the Word that you've given Chris, and that he could uh, bring that to us, and sort of just talk, talk, talk to us about sort of what he's been saying to Chris. And I just pray that um, everyone here and everyone online would um, hear, hear what Chris has said, and would it would just get them thinking that your Holy Spirit would just start to prompt people um, to make little changes in their life wherever that needs to happen and it's different for everyone. Yeah, I just think, I'm so thankful and just so grateful uh, for this awesome program that we've had this morning um, and yeah, just really excited to see what you have for us uh, moving on and in the future. Amen. Amen.